The following content has been provided by RWTH Aachen University. We're going to look at another trend in uh, or vision of HCI that came out um, around uh, 1988. Um, it was coined by Mark Weiser uh, from Xerox Park, who um, joined Park in '87 um, after working at the University of Maryland. Um, quickly became the head of the computer science lab there, uh, and then in '94 became the chief technology officer at Park. He uh, passed away way too soon in '99, um, and he, however, left a legacy that is, has been among the most influential in thinking about the future of interaction with computers and computing in general. Um, he coined the term ubiquitous computing, um, or Ubicomp for short, in 1988. Um, his idea was um, published in an article in 1991 for a, a more general audience called The Computer for the 21st Century. Um, and again, uh, to place that into context, you know, we, we're firmly in the PC era. The internet, you know, the web browser is currently being invented in the same year at CERN uh, by Tim Berners-Lee. Um, and at that point, uh, Weiser publishes this article. And it's a radical step away from what people had been thinking about computers so far. Because he says, hey, if we think about it, the most profound technologies that we invent as humanity actually disappear as we use them. This has a little bit to do with the, the phases of technology that we talked about earlier, in the enthusiast phase where the tech is all in, the, in your face, and then the professional technology, the consumer phase where it actually it's not as you know, obvious anymore. It disappears. And this disappearing is shown by writing. If you take writing, and he talks about this in his article, um, it used to be something that only people could do who had the manual skill to mix the right ink and have their clay tablets and you know, write on these things. Um, so you had to know a lot of stuff about the technology of writing early on. Today, Writing is everywhere, right? You got writing, of course, you're writing in your books yourself, but you got writing on your water bottle, on your coffee cup, you know, on candy wrappers. It's become a throwaway thing. We don't think about it anymore. Imagine if, you know, imagine a world re that removed all writing, all letters, right? It's, it's impossible to, to imagine that today. Um, if you compare IT, computer technology, and anything that we have to writing, we are really still sort of in the stone age, if you want, of, um, of the development, right? We've only really taken the first steps in digitization because currently, you know, you guys running your laptops there, you still need to worry about charging them regularly and they're like big clunky things you need to carry around. Even your smartphone needs a lot of attention, you know, so that it works right. Um, so we are really still at the stage of where writing was when people were scribes that had to use them. And, you know, now, Put yourself, some of the things that I say now might seem a little dated, but you got to remember this was done in 91 uh, when nobody had heard about smartphones or anything like that. Nobody actually, not many people had heard about cell phones for that matter. Um, so people were, you know, really working on PC workstations, maybe a laptop or so, but, you know, nothing, nothing really uh, more advanced than that. A second good example of disappearing technology that, uh, Weiser gives is motors. If you think about motors, um, in the 1900s when you know, the, the idea of having motors or engines uh, was, was being pioneered, you would have like one steam engine uh, running maybe per factory. So there was this big thing, steam or electric or whatever engine that was running somewhere. And then you would have belt pulleys all through the factory that were dispersing, that were moving the kinetic energy, the movement, the turning of that uh, central wheel into various rooms so that then you could run little, you know, machines and, 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 and work mills and whatever there. Today, uh, you know, if you think about how many motors are in your car, people say like one to drive it. Well, it's not true, of course, right? There's 22 is already a very low number. I think that's one that Weiser gives. Today, you've got hundreds of motors in your car, right? Servo motors moving all kinds of things, moving your uh, wipers, moving your windows up and down, moving your uh, foldable rear mirrors and whatnot. And we don't think about them, right? Because they're not really something we care about. They just work, right? We don't need to think about it. So they have, motors have disappeared 
into the fabric of everyday life in a way. There's even a motor in your cell phone that's running when you have you know, a vibration signal. Um, so they are hard to notice, and it's also not necessary to notice them because they are small enough, reliable enough, they don't need any you know, maintenance, those kinds of motors that we just don't need to think about them anymore. And that's how a very profound technology sort of disappears. Um, this will be a reading assignment uh, for you guys. Um, and in the is reading is also a couple of scenarios that I just want to very briefly mention. Um, for example, uh, you'll find in there a scenario of looking out the window and seeing tracks from the neighbors who already left for work, like leaving prints in the snow, sort of, um, which kind of gives you a cozy feeling of a close-knit neighborhood. I know my neighbors already went to work. Everything's fine. Nobody is sick over there. But it also is, of course, an issue of privacy, you know, like with the lady getting flowers and, and being watched on, on, uh, on, on a Skype-like you know, video conferencing link. It still mentions reading a paper newspaper, interestingly. Uh, you might say from today's point of view, well, that's clearly not going to happen uh, for much longer. We're clearly going to be moving to, to e-ink or, or paper or, or Kindles or, or iPads. Um, but the paper is being read with an electronic pen in his scenario, which then digitizes information and collects snippets that you can later refer to. Um, he's got a wonderful story in there, um, which is kind of key to the idea of ubiquitous computing, because ubiquitous means everywhere. So in his vision, computing, the power to compute, interactivity, smartness, will move into everyday devices, everything. So it's kind of like the whole idea of Internet of Things, if you like, it's, that's coming back now with an industry twist. Um, when he loses his garage door opener manual, um, he just basically asks uh, his little PDA, where is my manual? And the manual itself has a little tag attached to it, an electronic tag that knows where it is, so he can say, oh, it's in you know, the drawer in that room on that shelf or something. Um, he's, he talks about a car uh, in his car about a four-view mirror, not a rear-view mirror that looks behind him, but a four-view mirror that actually shows him empty parking spots ahead in the streets. And I'd like to have one of those in my cars. Um, he's got a fresh coffee indicator that is you know, available in every office, so when coffee is ready in the kitchen, everybody in every office will know that the coffee is ready, and they will then congregate and you know, socialize in, around the coffee machine. Um, there is a lot of collaboration that he talks about via um, tabs, which are really small devices, pads, which are more like tablets. Um, and there are a lot of these things. Um, you can easily move content from a tablet to a board to, act, to collaborate and move it back on. Um, and you switch very effortlessly between machines um, and various displays and devices. So in his scenario, I could take your cell phone and just use it for myself for a moment. And you would not freak out. Because in his vision of ubiquitous computing, the device is no longer essentially personal. It doesn't have to be, because it's so disposable. Like If I took your writing block or your pen and made myself a note, tore off a piece of paper, you'd be like, OK, that's cool. You know, I can have back my pen now. But it's fine to lend that out, because it's, you, know, you don't care. And you don't tell me, hey, I want two cents for my piece of paper. right? We don't worry about this, <laughs> I hope. Um, <laughs> If I took your cell phone, you'd be like, oh, I guess I want that back. You know? So computing, computer stuff is still way too expensive to be considered ubiquitous, to be expendable. But we are getting there. I mean, you're getting birthday cards with a tiny little chip in there and a battery that plays sound. And you're like, oh, that's nice. And then you, know, you toss it. Not very sustainable, not very green. But it shows that technology is coming down in price so that it becomes disposable, something we don't need to care about. This content was provided by RWTH, Aachen University.